Hello, I'm Anthony and this is Oxy. And it's just me for now, but Morocco will be joining later on in the video. So we're starting here. This is the first match of the, well, essentially our first WrestleMania. So we're recreating WWE history, but with my own fantasy booking. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. We'll start off with one year using this game, WWE Legends of WrestleMania. So it's not exactly always going to be realistic. You will get people like Stone Cold Steve Austin from the late 90s, Shawn Michaels and Triple H from the mid 90s, and then also people like Coco Beware from earlier on than that, from the 80s. So here we have the first match of this, uh, this card, five match card, and it's Greg the Hammer Valentine versus Coco Beware with his bird Frankie there. And uh, this one isn't actually a championship match or anything, it's just a, an exhibition match, but it will probably lead to potential championships further down the road for these two. See how it goes for them. And uh, Greg Valentine here, accompanied by Jimmy Hart, legendary manager. What we're doing here, starting off, everything is clean, there are no champions right now. Just starting history again, which is quite self-indulgent on my part, but, well, I used to do this kind of thing when I was younger on wrestling games, and now I just thought, why not make videos doing this? So the match starts, Greg Valentine gets the uh, early advantage with a nice punch there. She took Coco straight down and a body slam as well. And another one, for good measure. <laughs> so here we are outside the ring. Coco managing to get Greg down there. Jimmy Hart jumping around like an idiot. Greg hiding behind him briefly there. Nice big elbow, forearm. Coco going after Jimmy Hart a bit there. But that just gives Valentine the chance to smack his head on the steel steps there. Although they do look wooden actually. And put Coco back in the ring. So here we are, only about a minute and a half into the match, and Valentine hits Coco with a pile driver, a sort of pile driver there. And really, this is a bit of a surprise that already Valentine wins. As I said, just in time with Jerry the King Lawler there. So yeah, Greg Valentine wins the first match in 1 minute 39 seconds, which Surely will be a difficult record to beat for shortest match. They aren't all like this on the card, don't worry. Okay, so now here we are. It's the second match, and it's a battle royal, which Andre the Giant was quite famous for. And the first minute was kind of like this. The, the footage became quite corrupted. But uh, about a minute, a minute and five into the match, Big John Studd pushes Kamala straight over the top. So... Already eliminated there, Kamala. And Andre kind of getting double teamed there, but he manages to power back and stay in. But Big John Studd cannot. The 1989 Royal Rumble winner, eliminated by King Kong Bundy and Jimmy Snooker. So Andre's on the ropes again at this point, but still he manages to fight his way back in, beating these other big boys there. But Jimmy Snooker just hanging on, but Andre kicks him out. So it's only a minute and 46 in when Snooker's eliminated. Andre punching the air there, and Yokozuna goes out now. So Andre and Bundy, they would fight like this for about a minute, minute and a half, something like that. And then Bundy on the ropes, and out he goes. And Andre the Giant is the battle royal winner here at the first, well, our first WrestleMania. And there we go, surely that sets him up for some sort of championship match as well. Beating four other big men like that and also a good wrestler in Jimmy Snooker. So, we're on to match three now and it's the Honky Tonk Man for the Intercontinental Championship. The first of three championship matches on this card. 
This is Monica's favourite. You love the Honky Tonk oh, Man. Oh, what a nice dance. <laughs> <laughs> He's someone who you have actually seen, because I showed you the 2001 Royal Rumble once, when I wasn't feeling well. Yeah. One of the, the first pay-per-views I ever watched, because I had a, a video that somebody recorded <laughs> and gave to my mom for me. And uh, the Honky Tonk Man's in there, and he gets, gets a guitar smashed over his head by a cane. <laughs> Yeah. That was. I remember showing you that, and you were just like, "Oh my god!" When you saw him. Yeah, I mean, come on. Oh yeah. Like, oh, and the dance as well, and then <laughs> the way how he's ruining the guitars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm now joined by Marika. I should have mentioned that already. And oh yeah, I've had to cut bits of Rick Rude's entrance out because the audio was a bit um, interesting. But. Uh, when you look at Rick Rude, you can see how the Velveteen Dream has really based his gimmick on him a bit. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they have these he, dance moves? <laughs> Rick Rude is, was such a good wrestler, good technical wrestler, mm. and one of my favourites, I would say. Mm. And you'll hear this a lot from me during these uh, videos, but he's one of the best to never be world champion. Oh. But uh, Honky Tonk Man having the early advantage here. <clears throat> mm. I don't think that Honky Tonk Man was necessarily a good wrestler. Maybe back in the Memphis days, the territory days. Mm. But yeah, this is actually for the Intercontinental Championship, and that's the World Championship belt that he's holding there. All right, so that's. But uh, DQ is on, so if he hit Rick Rude, he would lose the match here. So I guess good thing he didn't there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe why he was so popular, because he just said that. It wasn't because of how good he was, but maybe just the yeah. character in a way. A Russian leg sweep is a really good move, and nobody seems to do it nowadays. Yeah, Jimmy Hart's been distracting Rick Rude a lot, and then Honky Tonk <laughs> puts him in a sleeper hold. Oh, that's and that's actually enough to take Rick Rude out. Ah. So, quite a surprising result in a way, that the Honky Tonk man would win, but... Yeah, he's the Intercontinental Champion, the first ever, and he now has to defend it within the next 30 days. That's the rule that I've come up with, mm. because that's WWE's official rule, but mm. they don't really stick to it that much. But champions mm. have to defend within 30 days. Mm. Alright, so we're on match number four now, and this one is for the Tag Team Championship. So here comes Junkyard Dog. And uh, if I just look at my notes here... Oh, I didn't really write much. All I wrote was, explain history. So <laughs> <laughs> That's clear. <laughs> thanks, thanks, me. Um, well, Junkyard Dog was an incredibly popular wrestler back in the 70s, in the territory days. And also, even when he first came to WWF at the time, mm. he was uh, really over with the crowd. And apparently some of the pops have not heard them from the crowd, but some of them were just as big as they were for Hulk Hogan, which is quite crazy when you think about it. Mm, yeah. um, and during his Memphis days, he actually teamed with Ted DiBiase. I think it was in Memphis, in Mid-South Wrestling. Mm. Uh, Ted DiBiase has actually named himself the Million Dollar Champion, because he's mm. the Million Dollar Man, your favourite theme tune. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's so it's so catchy. <laughs> it's so funny how we find well, both of us just humming this yeah. all the time. I was just playing this game <laughs> one time, and Ted DiBiase song came on, and then you were saying were singing this over and over again. <laughs> but yeah, just with with any other championship, he's been he's being forced to to defend that now within the next thirty days. Mm. He's just crowned himself champion. But uh, he's trying to become a double champion here, and I can't remember if I finished my thought, but yes, he was actually a tag team partner with Junkyard Dog, mm, his yeah, partner here, yeah. in uh, Mid-South yeah. at some point. But then they later feuded, which yeah. they might hear, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> later. <laughs> Spoilers. We'll, we'll but yeah, see these, about that. These two mm. filthy heels, they came out wearing the belts already, even though they're not champions. Ooh. Ridiculous. And you can tell That's that they're shows. bad guys because look at those flags that they're mm. waving. Those they're are not, not safe yeah, flags. So. <laughs> those are not America. If it's not the American flag, mm. it's just not right. <laughs> Nikolai Volkov, he's the one, this guy, 
Yeah. Waving the USSR flag. <laughs> um, he's the one who's actually born in Yugoslavia, as mm-hmm. it was then. Now it is Croatia. Mm-hmm. And I think it was the WrestleMania 17 gimmick battle royal. Uh, he came out wearing his USSR clothes. He was born in Yugoslavia, and they were playing the Finnish national anthem. This is his entrance <laughs> theme. Which you'll be... you love that. It's your anthem, your people. My, my anthem, yeah. So yeah, here we have the match for the Tag Team Championship. I don't think the Iron Sheiks look that good in a long time. Uh, mm. They try for a double team here, but the Junkyard Dog manages to stop them. And then straight away they go for it again. <laughs> I like the panicked look on his yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say I might zoom in on that, but it's already zoomed in. Yeah. And Nikolai Volkov pushing, uh, punching, pushing, punching, punching was... Dibiase <laughs> off. And now just putting his hands up after the punch. But... <laughs> Dibiase straight back up, pretty much no sold it. And in he comes mm. to try and break this up and he's just kicking the air. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> we have a nice little bit of chain wrestling here. I and she getting the upper hand at first. Look what a beautiful bridge. It is. Yeah. Yeah, Junkyard Dog, good at his yoga. And there's one of his famous headbutts. That was one of his specialities. Ah, okay. Uh, Nikolai Volkov didn't climb up there, but then he did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a Doomsday device, which was actually the Legion of Doom's finisher. They, I don't think these two ever did that. Okay. But they couldn't finish off Dibiase with that move, strangely. <laughs> and a nice suplex there from Junkyard Dog. But Iron Sheik has Dibiase down here. Punched Junkyard Dog off the side, and Junkyard Dog couldn't couldn't get up to help his friend. Mm. So, surprise, surprise, we have mm, actually one heels once again mm. filthy heels once. Honky Tonk Man's also a, a uh. bit of a, a bit of a rule breaker. <laughs> We're onto the main event now for the WWE Championship. I think it's just called that on the game. Not World Heavyweight Championship or anything like that. Mm, okay. Um, it's basically what it is. And I thought I would choose the two biggest stars from the 80s for this. Mm. So Hulk Hogan, the biggest star in the WWF, as it was then. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ric Flair, the biggest star in the NWA, I would say. Mm. I don't know, I guess Dusty Rhodes and people like that were also pretty in the Harley race. But yeah, anyway, well, maybe they're more... Oh, and it all blows into one. Mm. But yeah, so these two challenging for the championship anyway. Mm. Uh, he's a real American, so you know he's a good boy. Obviously. Not a filthy racist or anything <laughs> like that in recent years. No, no, no. no. Of course not. Apparently he's at uh, going to be a crown jewel at the Saudi Arabia show. Which everyone's so happy about. Yeah. You know, just throwing all of their bad publicity... Uh, Eggs into one basket. Exactly. Oh, it's going to be horrible. <laughs> uh, here comes Ric Flair. The Crown Jewel show is actually now, I think. It's happening right now. Ah, really? That's where we're recording, yeah. Hmm. Um, Nature. So, I have no idea if he is there or not, but that was the report. If he would be there. But yeah, Ric Flair with Bobby the Brain Heenan. He sadly only died, I think it was last year, Bobby Heenan. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Rick Rude, actually, also, he, well, not last year, but he died about 20 years ago. He was really young when he died. Mm, Just going back to him. I think it was actually an overdose. Heart failure. He was trying to get back into shape to get back into the ring, and there was some kind of complication with medications. Mm. He'd been retired for a while after a back injury. Mm. He was only 40, I think, something like that. So young, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Back to the world championship match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to crown our first world champion. And uh, talking about dead people. <laughs> Rick well, it's Flair bit, just interesting history. picking up the much larger Hogan immediately, going after the legs, throwing him into the rails. What a naughty boy. See how strong <laughs> he is. Jim Ross just saying it's not Flair's first barbecue. <laughs> yeah, getting some... Uh, some nice advice there. Use your brain. Mm-hmm. Bobby the brain here. And oh, it didn't work. Well, apparently not, because Hulk Hogan just <laughs> tossed him over. <laughs> Flair pulling him out of the ring, giving him a nice chop. Oh. And, uh, 
Oh, just briefly, actually, going back to the Iron Sheik's moustache. I think he still has that moustache now. <laughs> really? Yeah. He still makes appearances every now and again, it shows. It's interesting how some of the heels seem to ha really have moustache. <laughs> yeah. Bobby Heenan with a Ooh. big old axe hand all there to Hulk Hogan, and he really, uh, really took it quite badly. Mm. Yeah. Hulk Hogan did dominate for a lot of this match, but... Bobby Heenan was always a factor, and it gave Flair the chance to go after those legs again. Yeah. And uh, that gave him the chance to put in his finishing move, the figure four leg lock. Mm. And really, Hulk Hogan just does not have a chance. And uh, I don't think that would ever happen. Or ever did happen. I can't remember any time when Hulk Hogan tapped out <laughs> in real life. <laughs> As he said, he was that kind of person that he just didn't want to uh, lose. Political, uh, political pull backstage. Mm. Not gonna lie down for anyone, brother. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Flair, our first world champion. Mm. Uh, he has to defend that within the next thirty days. Mm. See when he does. To be honest, I prefer him to Hulk Hogan. I think that any everybody... even though he's the dirty heel. He's not. He doesn't love America enough. That, that's why. <laughs> I think that's that why he I probably does love America just as much. But, yeah, um, it's just the theme song. Well, it's, I'm a it's, real it's American. So horrible. It's and the so whole, catchy. The whole character thing. I just. Oh. It is quite outdated now. Yeah. It's quite painful to watch. It is. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so thank you for joining me. Um, thank you. We'll be back tomorrow. We have a video. And it's the first two weeks mm. of the weekly Monday night shows. That's how we're doing it. It's mm. a whole year. But we're squeezing it into between now and WrestleMania next year. <laughs> so we're doing two weeks of uh, the, like TV mm. kind of thing. As if this were a real promotion. But it's not. It's just a YouTube video series. Done by me. Yay. Without all of the bull poo poo backstage politics of people saying they're not going to lie down, brother. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us and thank you, Marika, for offering your wise insights. Your vast, <laughs> your vast wrestling knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I was just talking all the time. Yeah, God, just couldn't get you to shut up. <laughs>